it's, it's difficult to arrive at value judgments about digital technologies because, you know, they're not neutral. Um, first of all, the people who make them have their own biases going on and the, there's that entire um, problem, <laughs> we'll call it what you may there. Um, but also then like biases filter into these technologies themselves and there are like issues of access and so on. Um, so I frankly feel like there simply isn't um, like a good or bad answer to these kinds of questions where like, yeah, tech, tech is good or tech is bad. It's, it's all about, first of all, software production, and then how is it marketed, whom is it marketed to, whom is it targeted to, towards, and then how are you using it, consumption and so on. And I feel like to give you a more concrete answer would be two important points that I've kind of been mulling over over the course of these few days is, first of all, I was in an event, a workshop yesterday um, that talked about using AI to help people with disabilities. Um, and one of the points that was raised in that session was by Peter, who's from an organization that builds support for autistic people. And he said that, in, along with a few other people in the room, we, we all kind of collectively said that, um, well, you know, with something like autism, um, well, offline, it's something that often not diagnosed properly, especially with women. You have all these kind of biases playing out. And a lot of people just live with it their entire lives and come up with on-the-fly strategies to deal with it without really getting proper help. So when there's this entire diagnostic gap offline, uh, how is AI going to fix that? Because it's only focusing on healthcare. And it reminded me of a study that I read uh, last year, which looked at, and so this woman basically took these assistants, so Siri, um, Alexa, Cortana, and kind of spoke these random sentences into them saying, well, I was raped or I'm being harmed. Um, somebody's hitting me, domestic abuse. Um, and they did not have productive answers for those. Cortana even made a rape joke. We're there, yeah, 2018. Um, so my point is that we don't just need AI to address day-to-day -day needs for people with disabilities. It's also about distress, because being disabled also means that you go through a lot of daily distress. So if our AIs do not know how to read distress in subjects, um, how will they? address it. I mean, I personally, like, with my autism, I would love it if I have, like, an assistant that can tell me whenever I'm scrambled, I just push a button and it says, okay, listen, you're in this space, this is why you're here, this is what the time is, this is your orientation, this is where you have to go. Like, that's all I need to know. And then I'm like, okay, cool, cool, I can do this. And, um, and of course, noise-canceling headphones are a gift from God herself. <laughs> um, so that, and the second thing, I was in a session which talked about suicides, mental health and youth, and how tech plays in those dynamics. Um, and I think at this, because I also teach a course this semester at the university, which looks at, uh, it's more like an analytical approach to, well, who have we become as individuals and societies in the age of technology? And something, a response that I got from all my students who are like early 20s, um, 19, 20 years old, um, is that when they were in high school and they were students new to technology, they were baffled by it. And I feel like this is a point where we start thinking about actually having uh, formal modules in high schools and even lower maybe, uh, where we teach students about online abuse. It's a real thing, don't let it pass by. If it happens to you, this is what you do. There are alternatives. Don't go kill yourself, you know? Don't harm yourself. Um, you're okay, you're safe. Um, and use it properly. It's kind of like, you know, driving a car. If you don't know what you're doing, you are a danger to yourself and you will harm other people who are on the street with you. So I think these were kind of the key takeaways for me from, from this particular idea. And it, it was also a great opportunity to build more support systems and networks with people who are going through the same things.